live. A little out of tune on a few of those notes. That's what you get if you haven't played for a while. Anyway, welcome to the gourmet. Uh, whatever we're going to. Welcome to the fiddling gourmet. Uh, Gabriella requested that I make today fish and chips, which is what we're going to do. But we're basically going to just make the fish because I think everybody can pretty much figure out how to make chips. If you don't know how to make chips, um, <clears throat> go to the fish and chip shop. Anyway, so got the ingredients and not really going to give you weights and measures today. It's all about proportions and mixing things together. So we're going to make uh, battered fish and chips, not breaded batter, uh, a flour batter. And it consists, when I do it, primarily of two ingredients, which is corn flour or corn starch, which in America looks something like this, and your regular flour, um, which is all purpose flour. You could use self-raising flour. It doesn't really make too much difference. Uh, we're gonna use seltzer water, which is just sparkling water. Some people use beer. Um, yeah, I can't be faffing about with that. So I find seltzer water works just fine. If you don't have seltzer water, just use really cold ice water and just let the flour sit for a little longer. So I talked about not using weights and measures. Uh, actually, before I forget, first thing you want to do is turn on the cooking oil and um, that's sitting in a pan over here. So we'll turn that on. Uh, so that will get up to temperature, hopefully not too long. Um, so I'm going to take, in this case, an equal amount of flour to an equal amount of cornstarch, corn flour. So I'm only going to cook a little bit of fish, so I don't need much batter. So I'm just going to take two uh, big teat tablespoons. And so that's it, we're done for the regular flour. Now cornstarch is a bit like a uh, toner from a printer, in that this stuff is so fine, it um, gets everywhere, guaranteed by the end of this, some of it somehow will be on my front because it's just so fine and it gets picked up. So, two tablespoons of regular flour, two tablespoons of cornstarch. Then we need the seltzer water. So we're gonna take this and, uh, yeah, nice and fizzy. And I'm just gonna pour in a little bit at the beginning and we're gonna tip it over so you can see this. And then we're just gonna whisk it up and again, I'm not about amounts, I'm more about consistency. So that's way too thick. And really the consistency we're aiming for is like a, a thick double cream, whipping cream. Um, we'll get a good coating on our finger if we dip it in. So let's kind of get in there. I'm just gonna keep, get the lumps out. You just take your finger and we'll just stick your finger in there you see it, it sticks and coats your finger so just kind of like that uh, let's just get that off my finger and also you want some salt and pepper now some people might add their things like curry powder chili powder something to give a little spice some people even add a teaspoon of sugar and the teaspoon of sugar what that will do is just help it brown. So we're gonna just move that to the side and just let that sit there. And uh, now, get to the fish. So I went out fishing earlier. I caught some nice cod. Um, we're just gonna take this out. And this comes in, you know, a good size fillet. And what I do is I'll tend to just break this into like two parts initially. And then what I will take is a sharp knife and make that one into kind of two fillets. And you, it just thins it out a bit. And if you have kids, they like the smaller pieces. And again, we're just gonna take this one, make a fillet, and make another one here. Now you will notice this one is really quite thick. So that will take longer to cook. Or what you can do is just again, make another smaller one. And for grins, we can actually turn this one 
and to like little fish nuggets. So you can you can do your cod however you want to do it. If you want it like English fish and chip style, then you want to get a good size fillet going. So I've got my flour, and you see again the consistency. It's like a thick cream, and I, we didn't measure that out. We just did it kind of by eye. So get rid of the fork here. Don't need that. And when it comes to the cooking, we're just gonna dip each one into the batter. And before I take this over to the fryer, I think I'm gonna have to wait a few more minutes just to see what temperature it's got to. So we're actually at about 340. I normally don't try frying anything until it gets to 350 Fahrenheit. Um, Google will tell you what that is in Celsius. I no longer remember. I think it's about 170 degrees Celsius. Um, and uh, we can it though by just dipping our finger in. And then if you drop that in, if that sizzles when it goes in, then that's ready. So we're now gonna take this camera. And we should be able to get some view of the food and this isn't fresh oil I've used this before which is why you can see floaters in the top so we're gonna take our fish so just tap that and you want to put it in hold the tail for just a second when you drop it in and then lay it away from you now the reason you hold the tail in the fat for a little bit is it lets the batter firm up and it stops too much of it spreading away so we'll take another one. Now I'm just going to do two pieces for now. Because if you put in too much straight away, then you are going to cool down the oil temperature. Well, maybe I'll put in a couple of little nuggets. Okay. So then take these. And drop them in and drop off the surplus. Now, the way I tell if something's ready when I'm frying it, for things like fish, is it will float. So it will come to the surface of the oil when it's ready. And obviously a big indicator is the color. But again, if you put in sugar and things into the mixture, the color will go browner sooner. So I just wait for it to float within the oil so we'll come back to that in uh, a little while and I'll tell you how long it's been when I come back to the video so you can see now we've actually got uh, the fish is kind of floating so if I, if I'll show you what I mean you can see this is you know not sitting at the bottom and uh, these pieces are kind of you know sitting on the surface now I'm looking at this it's a bit pale but I can maybe leave it in for a little longer for a bit more color so for the purposes of yeah, we're going to leave it just a few seconds longer just to get a bit more color there. The other way um, that's a good indicator that you know the kind of a lot of the water's out of the fish and things is um, it bubbles a lot less. So we'll actually just take these pieces out, and drain the fat. with a couple of those little nuggets to talk about. Get out that other nugget. And again, you can see they're just floating around the bowl. And we'll get the last big bit of fish. Now, the reason why there's this kind of stuff on here is because um, it was old oil. It wasn't fresh oil. Anyway, so we'll let that drain some of the fat off for a second. Now, you'll find there's floaters in here. Uh, these are called scraps. And they're bits of the back that come off. Um, you know, when you're a kid, my dad will tell us they used to go to the supermarket, not the supermarket, they go to the chippy and they'd buy it for like two pence for a bag. Anyway, so that's the fish. We'll just bring it over here for a bit better light. And we should see there's a nice crunch to this. That's hot. That's a bit hot. So we'll get a couple of forks. And make it sure you can hear it crack. 
There you go. So your nice crisp batter, and you'd have that with salt and malt vinegar, and uh, I like it with a bit of curry sauce. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.